good morning. My last day here in Las Vegas, and I was trying to actually have a all-you-can-eat barbecue buffet for breakfast. Now, the buffets are closed in Las Vegas still until, actually, they're opening up this week, but I'll be gone by then. But as you know, I love buffets, and it just doesn't feel like a Vegas trip unless I go eat at a buffet. So the barbecue buffet is still open. But it was just way too many people. The place was packed. So I was actually going to come to this place for dinner. So I'm kind of swapping it. So I'm going to go to the all-you-can-eat buffet for like a late lunch, early dinner, and then I'll just eat this for breakfast. And this place is called Fire and Smoke. All right, I just ordered something truly tremendous. And before that gets here, a huge shout out and thank you to Vessi for partnering with me on this video. Ever since I started working with Vessi, I think last fall, all the shoes I own are now from them. Not only that, my parents were looking for shoes last month, so I bought them a couple pairs as well. They love it, especially right now in the spring. It's rainy more in New York and wet socks. The only thing that might be worse than that is probably broccoli. I love the Vessi shoes because first of all, I think they look good. Also, super comfortable, lightweight, is breathable, and 100% waterproof. If you saw one of my previous videos, I lost a game with the ocean, and the water came up way above my ankles. So obviously, my ankles were a little wet, and of course, don't actually step in that deep of water, but my toes, the bottom of my feet, completely dry. They're super easy to clean. You can toss them in your washer. They're also sustainably made, meaning no material waste, less water waste, and no animal byproduct. And they're made from Dymatex, which is a dual climate knit, which means that in the summer, you're gonna be cool. In the winter, you're gonna be warm. Seriously, these are the first pair I ever got haven't taken them off been wearing them every single day for months now so if you want to give these a try go to my link down below use my promo code Mikey Chen you'll get $25 off your order seriously me and my parents favorite pair of shoes now oh I think it's a coming check this out have you ever seen a blueberry burger before only in Vegas right this is a blueberry slider I think it's uh a little chicken sandwich with blueberry and cheese inside. And on the bottom, one jalapeno. If this is wrong, I don't want anything to be right. Now, I heard about the blueberry burger, that's why I came here. I was skeptical whether it would actually work. This is delicious. I mean, if you think about the concept, really nothing wrong with it. Sweet and savory on a deliciously juicy little fried chicken patty, soft roll, and a tiny bit of kick from the jalapeno. That is really good. Also, Vegas price, check it out. Guess how much this is? $2 per slider. How cheap is that? So the bottom is a, is a blueberry aioli. Mmm. Oh, that's creamy. I could seriously come here to just like 10 of these. Don't knock it until you try it, but it's sweet, it's savory, it's spicy, it's creamy, it's crispy. Is there any words I just said that you don't like on your food? Mm. Must try when you come to Vegas. I... Do you, you'll know why I'm speechless when you take a look at this. This burger is just wild. First of all, bun is so pretty. Perfectly toasted. Look at this. Some caramelized onions, pickles, some kind of sauce smothered all over the bacon. And right underneath is a mound of pulled pork, which they cook right here. And look at this. There's some fatty pieces of the pork as well. And this thing just looks so incredibly tender. And under that, get a load of this, half a pound of Angus beef patty. And underneath that, more onions, more pickles, more sauce. It's just like, like a pool of sauce poured all over this burger. This is what I love about Las Vegas food. People do not, do not hold back when it comes to food here. I mean, this easily could have been like, like a, just a regular saucy burger, but no, here in Vegas, the sauce is just everywhere. Oh, that is good sauce. It's Cajun fries and the sauce is some sort of barbecue sauce. It's, very vinegary and smoky. Again, I have no idea how to even begin to... Oh my gosh. Are you kidding me right now with this? Look at this droopy mess of a burger. Is there anything more intimidating at the same time appetizing you've ever seen? Just the pork is about to fall out. That's how overflowing this thing is. All right, I gotta, I gotta try, try to do this.
so incredible. Oh, this is so good. You need, you need to come and try this burger. It's just amazingly cooked, delicious beef patty. It's cooked to a perfect medium. The pork on top is completely melts in your mouth. And because the sauce is poured around the burger and the bun soaked up so much of it, each bite is just like releasing a tsunami of this amazing barbecue sauce on top of all that juice that's coming out of the burger patty. The sauce is smoky, it's tangy, it's very vinegary. I love vinegar on my food. And because this thing, it's so meaty and fatty. The vinegar is so good because it cuts through that grease. So even though you're eating something that's kind of fatty and heavy, it really doesn't feel like it at all. Maybe I should have moved here instead of to Texas. I think I would like Vegas. This definitely would be a place where I can grow very quickly. You know, horizontally. This is it, I haven't been here in about two years and all you can eat Southern barbecue buffet here in Las Vegas. When I was here last time, I think it was like $35, $36 for anything you want on the menu. The price went up a little bit, obviously, so it's $45, anything you want on the menu. I think most people, if you come here, you might not um, eat that much, but I think I will. Hey man, let me get the all you can eat, please. What's the time limit? One hour. One hour? You can't take it home. Did you guys change that? It's always been an hour? All right, let me get the smoked meatloaf. Uh, one beef rib. I want some variety. Oh, so many flavors of Kool-Aid. There's ice cream. I'll take some Kool-Aid. Well, look at this. Look at this beef rib. This looks like it came from the planet meat. When you dig below the surface of the crust, you get a layer of melty, glistening fat. And look at this. This is a plastic fork. I'm just barely scraping the meat. And it is just breaking apart with zero resistance. And that beautiful smoke ring is ever so present. This is the prettiest part though. Look at that fantastic blackened crust. Also, I got the smoked meatloaf. I think I got this last time too. Coarse crispy onions on top and it's sitting on a bed of mashed potatoes. Oh, it's so exciting to be back. This was one of my favorite things uh, in Vegas. Fav favorite place to eat in Vegas because even back when the buffets were open, like just coming here because this is not like a buffet, buffet food. You know, like sometimes you go to a buffet, it's just because they make so much, the quality isn't so good. This is top quality stuff for as much as you want. Smoke me love. Okay. I think I remember now. I think I got this last time too. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm 99% sure. I don't think I should have got this. I think the last time I remember it wasn't the most moist piece of meat. It is a little dry. Huh. Right after I was saying, you got quality stuff. And then kind of, kind of a drive me love. But this thing. You barely sink your teeth into this and it just comes apart. And you will have zero effort getting the meat off the bone here. No effort here. I'm gonna smoke the juicy, trying to be for it. Only thing I need, oh, they got tons of sauces here too, you can try. Oh, this is so good. Especially the fatty part right here with all the crust and the fat. That's all you get 
And that's all you need. The only thing I need to find is like a spicier version of that sauce, but otherwise, life doesn't get much better than this. All right, time for round two. Here we go. Thank you. You're very welcome. Would you like mayo, mustard? Uh, do you have a you spicier have sauce? Yes. Can you bring me that? Thank you. Round two was here. Check out that gorgeous smoke ring and glistening rib. This rib is so juicy and just look at that beautiful crust. And this burger is just so pretty, look at it. Half a pound of Wagyu. Of course, I don't know what cut this is. Sitting on a pickles, onions, beautifully fat tomato. It's just a beautiful burger. This burger shouldn't be in Vegas. This burger looks like it should be living in LA with a modeling contract. That's a melt in your mouth, fat patty of a burger. But I feel like if I haven't just had like a out of this solar system burger um, this morning, I'd be much more into that, but it's a solid burger. I definitely don't feel like it's an A5 Wagyu though. It's definitely a, a, a burger that's kind of more on the lean side. So I'm uh, trying to move this along very quickly. I may be able to put in one more order of spare ribs. Yeah, if every celebrity were like these spare ribs, the tabloids would be out of business because there's absolutely nothing bad you can say about these spare ribs. You see that delicious smoke ring, tender meat. Look how clean it comes off the bone. Oh, add some of their spicy barbecue sauce. I know Vegas is already pretty hot, but trust me, Add this on. And you don't need to add a lot of the spicy sauce. Just add a little bit, like what I'm doing here. I think I like that more than a burger. And because this place, whew, I did not break my streak of always having a buffet every single time I came to Vegas. Round three. Round three, my final round. I am kind of sad they ran out of baby back ribs. So uh, if you ever come here, maybe get that early. I definitely should have started with baby back ribs. What was I thinking? Spare ribs. Nobody ever runs out of that. It's in the name. There's always something to spare. So last order of barbecue, got the fatty brisket. And ask for the really fatty part. This is something I'm gonna be eating a lot of after my move to Texas, I'm sure. I got some burnt ends. And I got a banana pudding. That is definitely the smokiest part of the meat. Although I gotta say, the sauce is a little too sweet for my liking. It's good, but it's not as tender as I would have hoped for. Oh yeah. If you want to find heaven in Sin City, come here and order some briskets. Just the most tender piece of smoked meat. 100% mm. get the fatty part. Then you don't have to spend money for tickets to a magic show. This thing will do a disappearing act in your mouth. They didn't really season this though, so put some barbecue sauce on it. Spicy one, if you can take it. Oh, yeah, that just may be too good. And if you ever get sick of how soft that brisket is, which you most likely never will, you can always take a bite of pickle just to change up the texture a little bit. Mm. Happy last Las Vegas food day to me. This is something else I always get when I come here. I knew I remember this thing from last time. You have to get a banana pudding when you come here. Stop going to New York and that Sex in the City place. What's it called? Jasmine or Chrysanthemum or Magnolia. Stop, stop. That banana pudding neither tastes like bananas nor a pudding. This is a great banana pudding right here. So many layers too of crumple and sweet, smooth, cloud-like banana pudding. 
Mmm. With a little wafers inside. 100% must get, especially if you've been eating a lot of their spicy barbecue sauce. Eat this at the end, just completely cools your mouth down. My favorite barbecue items today, beef rib for sure. Brisket, I love. Spare ribs, amazing. Didn't get to try the baby back ribs, I can't really tell you about that. Wagyu burger was good, but my tip is, if you come and get the all-you-can-eat um, barbecue, skip the burgers. Because if you just get the barbecue, they have the barbecue cooked already, so they can bring it out to you really quickly. So you can actually eat a lot of meat within the hour. But if you get something like the meatloaf with a burger, they're gonna spend about 10, 15 minutes cooking each one of those items. That's some precious meat eating time that you're just letting slip away. Plus the meatloaf, eh, it's all right. That's definitely not worth a round of barbecue you're sacrificing to order it. And of course, finish off with this. So for the all-you-can-eat barbecue, if you don't eat a lot, then obviously it's really no point in getting it. But if you like variety, you just want to try a bunch of stuff. I think it's the way to go. All right, I got to go back to my hotel room. I got some work I need to finish up. And then we'll see if we can find some place for dinner. Last dinner in Vegas. I don't even know, when would I ever come back here again? Like, I have no idea. I mean, I'm only here because I'm driving through to Texas. Like, I don't know. Hopefully soon. Every time I see the poster for Carrot Top, he looks like he's somebody the Winchester should be fighting against the Supernatural. Ew. Speaking of Supernatural, there's a zombie right over, right over, right over there. <laughs> Scared the hell out of me. My final stroll around the strip, my final fountain show. Did you know, up in that, that, that top floor somewhere in the, in the Bellagio, there's actually a button that you can control and push and make that fountain go on whenever you want. I mean, you gotta have some money to do it, but you, you could do it, there's a button. I, I don't know why. Last night I got about eight hours of sleep because obviously I have a long drive today. Still really tired. It's about eight o'clock in the morning. Why do I look so blue? Anyway, about eight o'clock in the morning and I'm finally leaving Las Vegas. Wasn't that a Nicolas Cage movie? Let's drag on this Vegas goodbye a little while longer by going for some breakfast or maybe two. place was pretty packed so got my food to go this is okay so las vegas it's known for obviously the the nice super fine dining restaurants but it's also really known for its diner food and coming from the midwest having lived in misery for many years i love me my diner food and this place is supposed to be one of the best for your typical diner breakfast and they're most famous for Ta da they're chicken fried steak. You never had a chicken fried steak before? It probably just means that you never lived in the Midwest or the South. Let me explain this to you. Chicken fried steak is basically, how should I say this? One of the most delicious life reducing food items you could ever eat. It's a beef steak that is breaded and deep fried. So it's super, super crispy. Actually, I'm just gonna do something here. There we go. I want my eggs on top of my steak. Look at that. And I like to just let it flow. So this place ain't holding back nothing. Three perfectly cooked runny eggs. And then the magic to a chicken fried steak is this. This is the best part. Cover the entire fry steak up with that gravy. The eggs are in here as well. Typically you kind of eat the eggs separately, but logistically, that's just kind of difficult for me, so uh, everything is going to go together, which is fine. Ain't nothing wrong with however you want to eat your chicken fried steak. I estimate each bite will most likely take about six months off my life. For how delicious this is, it's a fair trade. I encourage you, if you never had a chicken fry steak, please come here and try their chicken fry steak. This is something that's really hard to find a good version of when you live in cities like New York, LA, San Francisco, like good diner food. Diners have been around for decades and this is what they specialize, this stuff. The artery clogging good stuff.
Of course, you got your biscuit all buttered up. So you can't let your gravy go to waste. My eggs have officially frolicked with the gravy. And just go ahead and take your toast, get it all up in there. Oh, happy day. So I used to go to school in this little town called Kirksville, Missouri. Population 17,000, including the college students. The school is called Truman State University. And the most popular restaurant there was a place called Pancake City. It was open 24 hours, so we would always go at around 2 a.m. It would be the only place that's open. Like my daily 2 a.m. meal at the time would literally be biscuits and gravy, curly fries, and a giant root beer float. I would eat that almost every single day at 2 a.m. You think my metabolism is good now? Anyway, I always thought of college as the best time of my life. Like, it was just so fun being there and nothing but good memories. I mean, if I had to do it again, I might not go back to that same school, but college was definitely the best time of my life. And that's also part of the reason why I remember food like this so fondly. All right, it's getting really windy out here, so I'm gonna eat up and I wanna go to one more place before we leave Vegas. All right, I'm at the, I guess this is the official Chinatown because it has a gate that says Chinatown. Check it out, they got a Yonghe Doujiang here. That's like the best soy milk place in all of Taiwan. So I guess this, this is a, there's a food court in here. Oh yeah, okay. So this is like a little outlet mall. I think this is the place. It says Yummy Box Cafe. Oh, so this is a Taiwanese place. All the favorites are here. They got the beef noodle soup. This is a classic Taiwanese thin rice noodles. Some dumplings, jiajiamen, owajian oyster pancakes. And breakfast, youtiao fried dough, some pancakes, and this is the soy milk. I was really excited because on the pictures I saw they had tomatoes and eggs. And God, I just... Whenever I see tomatoes and eggs, it's just the most comforting sight. Um, they said they might have it, they might not have it. I don't know what that means. So I guess if it shows up, then they have it. Okay. I, there's no tomatoes and eggs because it didn't show up on my plate. But this looks great. Nice hefty helping of ribs. Marinated egg. This is really cool. Um, lu rou fun, minced pork belly over rice. This is one of my favorite dishes in Taiwan. You know, what I love about it is they could have just given me rice, but they give me pork belly over rice. Extra points for this place. And some vegetables. And I got spicy oil chili wontons. And my soy milk. Mmm. Oh, that's good soy milk. This basically is a chopped up pork chop. Mmm. Oh, it's so ginger. I don't think they grilled this, so I think they might have, might have braised it. Still really good. What I love about the pork belly over rice is you see all that fat and juice soaking into the rice. That's the best part. Mm. Oh, that's so good. Marinated eggs are excellent. For those of you guys who are on a low carb diet, please stop eating just like regular boiled eggs. I'm gonna put my uh, tea egg recipe on the bottom. Try it out. You still be eating a ton of eggs, but this time it'll actually taste good. The chili wontons are surprisingly good. Taiwanese places aren't typically known for spicy stuff. That's a spicy chili oil, and the wontons are stuffed full of meat. What a happy surprise. Ah, my last meal in Las Vegas. This place has really, in terms of the Asian food scene, exploded. And every time I leave, I would always feel sad to leave Vegas. This time, I feel exceptionally sad to leave Vegas. Who knows? Maybe after a year in Texas, I'll move here. I think I'm, I'm now like known as um, the guy who eats a lot of food and moves once a year. I'm okay with that. I got Stoner really close to me, Grand Canyon really close to me, Los Angeles really close to me. And it's not like I didn't think about it. I was considering Florida, Texas, or Nevada. And Texas went out because, well, barbecue, tons of Asian food. And also it actually rains on like here. But anyway, who knows what the future will bring? 
Uh, and that wraps up all my food adventures here in Las Vegas. Today's the easiest day of my trek to Texas because my drive is only about four and a half hours. So we'll make some stop along the way, see if there's anything fun to do, anything good to eat. And I'm excited. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. See you later.